This is KTN News. Well, as indicated earlier, well, innovation right here in studio and with us to, well, take that conversation forward. Melissa McCoy, the brains behind, well, the technology that is indeed driving medical services here in Kenya, uh, literally. It's, uh, what's the name again? It's Connect Med. Connect Med, mm -hmm. yes. I can see it on your shirt. Yes. Um, this is not a gadget. It's an application, literally. It's a service that will help you be able to find medical services either online, either on your phone, or literally via technology. This is bringing access to many people who otherwise not have it, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, it's effectively a comprehensive online telehealth platform mm -hmm. where you can video consult a doctor yes. anytime, anywhere, um, mm -hmm. and get treated for a variety of common ailments. So that includes getting a prescription, referral letter, sick note, um, and we have discount partners who will provide discounts on further follow-on services. Mm -hmm. That immediately raises the two questions, first payment methods, and secondly, what about the drugs? Who will do the dispensing and that sort of thing? Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can pay by any type of mobile money, um, in PESA, Airtel money, as well as credit or debit card. Yes. Um, and essentially, our, we have a partnership right now with Pharma Plus and working yes. on a partnership with Good Life to where you could go take that prescription, get it, and you'd get around 10 to 20 percent discount on that medication. But mm -hmm. you can obviously take it to any chemist or pharmacy and mm -hmm. get that fulfilled. Mm -hmm. and it's a good thing that you mentioned uh, Good Life because they have been at the forefront of, well, sort of trying to formalize the dispensing industry in this country because usually it's been mom and pop uh, single mm -hmm. person stores uh, for drugs. And what you're doing here essentially tries to provide that sort of formalization service in places that might be remote, uh, don't have the usual access to medical services. What do you think would be the benefits to the populace? Well, I mean, definitely there's the aspect of having greater access, whether geographically, if you're yes. in a rural area, as well as temporally, if you need to see a doctor at night or on the weekends, mm -hmm. which like new parents find very attractive and other types of patients. Mm -hmm. um, you also have greater privacy. So we've seen a lot of you know, patients who have mental health or maybe depression or sexual health or other kind of stigmatized issues, mm -hmm. and they really love the privacy of this type of platform. Mm -hmm. You also come into play the fact that you know we're co more cost effective, and right now we're starting at a a higher price point, but we'll get that down as we scale. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really going to make it more affordable to see these high quality private doctors who mm -hmm. currently serve at Nairobi Hospital Aga Khan. Yeah, I was actually going to ask about the doctors, whether they are local or foreign and that sort of thing. Because usually, uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, for only for some sort of ailments would this service literally work. Mm -hmm. After that, you'd have to start to, well, coming in. Uh, the, the, the technology limits to, uh, this to people with uh, mostly a camera, right? It does. Right now, our, we call it our prime service. is just targeted to those who have their own video-enabled devices as well as access to data. Yes. Um, but we're expanding that into, we have something called the care model where we're trying to partner with pharmacies, other even cyber cafes where those without technology could come and use the service. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a variety of other ways that we're going to change our product offering where mm -hmm. you could do some type of you know, symptom um, taking and history taking, maybe yes. even via USSD or SMS, and mm -hmm. then if you need to be triaged, you know, to see a physical doctor or see one of our doctors over the phone mm -hmm. or at a video point, you can go do that. Mm -hmm. There was a mention at launch of a clinic where people can literally go in and be able to access some of this, because the challenge is that uh, sometimes we do have the physical infrastructure, but not the service. Sure. So if we have a dispensary or that sort of thing, we can uh, literally say we want to set up uh, the video conferencing service, mm -hmm. but your doctor can be hundreds of miles away. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. We kind of you know, see a model where we're bringing the doctor, which is a very scarce resource, um, yes. using their time much more effectively. So mm -hmm. we kind of you know, create extra productive hours in the doctor populace mm -hmm. um, and can reach more people that way. Mm -hmm. well, one of the most popular ways of outreach in this part of the world is the medical camps and medical uh, caravans that keep going everywhere. And doctors have to devote uh, weeks at a time, sometimes days, to travel out of Nairobi and go to places like this. Would this uh, then tweak that system, disrupt it even? by essentially just uh, saying that you can have just the van and the nurse and a variety of medicine or a person to dispense the drugs and the doctor then works from his office uh, with uh, the De same efficiency. 
Definitely. It definitely complements those type of initiatives, mm -hmm. especially I think in a survey we did in South Africa as well as in here in Kenya, over 70% of doctors said they'd be willing to offer their services at discounted rates if they didn't have to rural patients or low-income mm -hmm. patients, if they didn't have to actually travel there. So we would be allowing, kind of capturing that doctor goodwill mm -hmm. and allowing them to support these type of camps that are set up. Exactly. Let's talk about payments. Uh, how do the doctors make their money and how do the people who are uh, using the service pay for it? Sure. Um, so on the patient side, as I mentioned, you can use any type of mobile money um, or Visa or, or MasterCard, any type of credit card. We use a PesaPal's um, payment gateway. Mm -hmm. On the doctor side, um, yes. we have multiple ways that they can um, kind of work for us as independent contractors. Right now, it's all, we call it Uber style, where yes. they're just available doctors in our pool who've said on their schedule, I'm available during these slots. Mm -hmm. When a patient comes and books, it basically SMSs and emails those specific doctors, and mm -hmm. whoever's first to click on the link gets the, the patient. Okay. And, and that works pretty well for now. Uh, so it's not uh, like appointments and that sort of thing, or well, that can still happen. You book an appointment, say, I want to see the doctor at three and they make time. It's exactly. It's um, you can do it within a two-hour lead time right now, mm -hmm. or later in the day, or really any time in the week. Mm -hmm. um, and that doctor then claims for the time, like, oh, I know I'm going to be free at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'll take the the patient then. Okay. And indeed, uh, thank you very much, Melissa, for taking the time to talk to, talk to us. Uh, technology in, uh, indeed uh, driving uh, this economy and innovation such as this disrupting age-old ways of doing things. And we're definitely going to be on the lookout uh, for you to be able to tell us what the uptake has been after several months. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, we again want to remind you of our Twitter poll question, which we were asking, uh, what incentives do you think Kenya needs to undertake to fully embrace entrepreneurship? Again, what incentives do you think Kenya needs to undertake to fully embrace entrepreneurship? Of course, the hashtag is business today. Reach out to me directly on at Peter Kaba, or reach out to us on at KTN News. Well, just to give you just uh, a sample of uh, what the conversation has uh, been online, to find you uh, what some of uh, the entrepreneurs are saying. Well, the honor that is Kalichik saying, well, some entrepreneurs usually are not about uh, the work. They are simply about comfort and uh, style. And this might, of course, compromise what uh, they might do. Fat Tony saying, well, I have a cleaning lady who's a real entrepreneur but uh, she knows how to clean really well. And of course, uh, the fact of the matter being that government should also be able to support entrepreneurs in one way or another. Well, that's where we want to 